Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing events that transpired in the Harry Potter universe after the books and films ended. With the latest Fantastic Beasts film on the way, The Secrets of Dumbledore, we can expect to learn even more information about the Wizarding World before Harry, Ron and Hermione embarked on their journey at Hogwarts. However, what I want to hone in on today are the events that happened afterwards. What happened to Hagrid? Draco, Harry. Let's dive in. 10. Voldemort I know what you're thinking, didn't Voldemort die? Well, technically yes, his physical form was destroyed, but that certainly doesn't mean that Voldemort met his true end. You see, because of the cursed life that Voldemort chose, he was sent to a place that is neither representative of life nor death. Voldemort had sacrificed his soul on countless occasions doing anything and everything he could to achieve his goal of immortality. During his lifetime, Voldemort committed atrocity after atrocity, murdering people to create horcruxes and even killing and drinking the blood of a unicorn, an act so vile that the drinker is destined to have a cursed existence. So you see, Voldemort's soul could never have been at rest, and for the life that he chose to live, he had to pay the ultimate price, an existence in limbo. Limbo is often perceived as a forgotten or ignored place, a place that interestingly enough would have been a stark reminder of Voldemort's formative years when he was left at Wolves Orphanage as a baby. 9. Neville Longbottom After the Battle of Hogwarts, Neville didn't waste any time in pursuing a career as an Auror, and gifted Auror he was. However, it would later become clear that being an Auror wasn't his true passion and when he was offered a position at Hogwarts by now headmistress Minerva McGonagall, he accepted. You see, Neville was also particularly passionate about one subject while at school, herbology, and it just so happened that his new role would have him working under herbology department head Pomona Sprout. Neville would eventually go on to marry former classmate Hannah Abbott, a Hufflepuff student and former member of Dumbledore's army. Because Hannah worked as a landlady for the Leaky Cauldron, it was only natural that Neville and Hannah would live upstairs, where they lived for many years. After some time, Hannah eventually applied for the job of matron at Hogwarts. 8. Ron Weasley The epilogue certainly gave away aspects of Ron's future, particularly as he is shown sending his children off to Hogwarts at Platform 9 and 3 quarters alongside his new wife, Hermione Granger. The pair had two children, Rose and Hugo Granger Weasley. In the epilogue, Ron and Hermione can be seen sending Rose off to Hogwarts along with Harry's son, Albus. In addition to marrying Hermione, Ron pursued the career path of an aura and eventually became an aura for the Ministry of Magic. JK Rowling had this to say of Ron joining the Ministry. Harry and Ron utterly revolutionized the aura department, Rowling said. They are now the experts. It doesn't matter how old they are or what else they've done. Rowling also emphasized that by joining the Ministry, Harry and Ron helped revolutionize it into a really good place to be. They made a new world, Rowling said. However, Ron didn't remain at the Ministry forever, and later left so that he could help out his brother, George Weasley, with the Weasley's Wizarding Weezers joke shop. It has also been expressed that despite Ron's terrible driving track record, he did eventually obtain a muggle driving license, even if he had to place a Confundus charm on the driving instructor to get it. 7. Hermione Granger the first thing Hermione did after the Battle of Hogwarts was find her parents. If you don't remember, Hermione had to make a difficult choice during the war with Voldemort in which she wiped their memories and convinced them to relocate to Australia. This was all in the effort of protecting them, but it was a somber moment for sure. Fortunately, with Voldemort out of the way, this gave her an opportunity to track them down and restore the memories that she had previously wiped. After this, in typical Hermione fashion, she ended up going back to Hogwarts in order to attain her newts. After this, she began her post-Hogwarts career at the Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures, where she was able to help improve the lives of house elves and the like. After some time in the position, she eventually moved to the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, where she was instrumental in helping to abolish pro-pureblood laws. Oh yeah, and during all of this, Hermione and Ron Weasley became a proper item, going on to get married and have two children. And as if Hermione hadn't done enough in her post-Hogwarts years, it's been expressed that in 2019, she even became Minister for Magic. Hermione's life post Deathly Hallows certainly wasn't short of excitement. 6. Harry Potter 
In the epilogue for the final installment, we learn that Harry ended up marrying, shocker, Ginny Weasley, and that they had two sons, James Sirius and Albus Severus, as well as a daughter, Lily Luna. Unlike Hermione, Harry never returned to Hogwarts to finish his newts, but he did dive right into his career as an aura at the Ministry of Magic. As it turns out, Harry was able to achieve the honor of Head Aura at the ripe age of 26. It's also been revealed that in addition to raising his own kids, Harry spent a considerable amount of time with Teddy Lupin, the orphan son of Remus and Tonks. Teddy was officially raised by his grandmother, but Harry helped whenever he could. Harry, Ron, and Hermione were also eventually immortalized on chocolate frog cards for their contributions to wizarding society. 5. George Weasley What happened to George can best be summarized by Rowling herself. A lot of readers asked me, was George alright? And of course, he wouldn't be alright, would he? That's the reality. But I think that he married Angelina, who was actually Fred's ex. Maybe it's a bit unhealthy, but I think that they would have been happy, as happy as he could be without Fred. I think he really would have felt like part of himself died. I don't think that George would ever get over losing Fred, which makes me feel so sad. However, he names his first child and son Fred, and he goes on to have a very successful career, helped by good old Ron. Ron joined George at Weasley's Wizarding Wheezes, which became an enormous money spinner. 4. Luna Lovegood It turns out that later in life, Luna went on to become a rather famous magizoologist. For those unfamiliar with the profession, a magizoologist is a wizard or witch who studies magical creatures. This profession shouldn't come as a surprise given that Luna exhibited an affinity for magical creatures during the Harry Potter story, properly introducing Harry to Thestrals in the Order of the Phoenix. The perhaps most notable magizoologist is Newt's commander, who wrote Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Interestingly enough, Luna actually went on to marry Rolf's commander, Newt's grandson. It has been expressed that for their wedding, Luna dressed in typical eccentric Luna fashion, sporting a rainbow dress and tiara with unicorn horns. Later on, sometime between the years 2008 and 2014, the pair had two sons, Lorcan and Lycander. As an adult, Luna remained close friends with Harry, Ron, and Hermione. In fact, Luna made such an impression on Harry that he named his daughter Lily Luna after his mother and of course Luna, a true honor. According to Rowling, Luna never changed. She remained her quirky, lovable self, which is what I think we all hoped for. 3. Hagrid it turns out that Hagrid simply continued working at Hogwarts in his usual posting. The only thing that Hagrid loved more than Hogwarts was his love of magical creatures, which explains why he would choose to continue on as professor for the care of magical creatures at the school. Hagrid is also referenced in the epilogue by Harry while speaking to his son Albus. Bye, Al, said Harry as his son hugged him. Don't forget Hagrid's invited you to tea next Friday. Don't mess with Peeves. Don't duel anyone till you've learned how and don't let James wind you up. The epilogue of Harry Potter gave us a glimpse of 19 years into the future, which would make the year 2017 and Hagrid 89 years old. However, thanks to the longevity of Wizardkind, I'm sure that Hagrid was still very sprightly. In addition to teaching at Hogwarts, it's been suggested that Hagrid may have, at one point, further pursued a relationship with Madame Maxime. However, the two eventually proved to be too different to make things work. 2. Draco Malfoy As it turns out, Draco's post-Hogwarts life and well, overall demeanor has been written about extensively on Pottermore. It's also a bit somber. The biggest revelation was that he became less of a pure-blood fanatic. The events of Draco's late teens forever changed his life. He had had the beliefs with which he had grown up challenged in the most frightening way. He had experienced terror and despair. Seen his parents suffer for their allegiance, and had witnessed the crumbling of all that his family had believed in. After the events of the Second Wizarding War, Lucius found his son as affectionate as ever, but refusing to follow the same old, pure bloodline. Draco married the younger sister of a fellow Slytherin. Astoria Greengrass, who had gone through a similar, though less violent and frightening conversion from pure blood ideals to a more tolerant life view, was felt by Narcissa and Lucius to be something of a disappointment as a daughter-in-law. As Astoria refused to raise their grandson Scorpius in the belief that muggles were scum, family gatherings were often fraught with tension. Also, he seemingly mellowed out a bit, leading a life of leisure instead of working to overturn the forces of light or establish dominion over muggles. 
like Lucius did. I imagine that Draco grew up to lead a modified version of his father's existence. Independently wealthy, without any need to work, Draco inhabits Malfoy Manor with his wife and son. As mentioned above, the pair had a child, Scorpius Malfoy, who attended Hogwarts at the same time as Albus Severus Potter. In a tragic turn of events, Astoria actually ended up dying quite young, falling victim to a bloodborne family curse. This left Draco a single father who lived out his days mostly alone. 1. The Dursleys Interestingly enough, very little is revealed about the Dursleys after they pack up and head off. However, it turns out that Dudley's moment of redemption, the deleted scene where he shakes Harry's hand, may have had quite an impact on their relationship. In fact, it is later revealed by Rowling that, despite Dudley's years of abuse towards Harry, they were later on Christmas card terms. As he grew older, Dudley developed into a decent man, very much unlike the tyrannous force of nature that he embodied in his youth. Dudley even eventually got married and had a family of his own, raising two muggled children. Harry and Dudley would still see each other enough to be on Christmas card terms, but they would visit more out of a sense of duty and sit in silence so that their children could see their cousins. This suggests that they were never quite friends, but certainly cordial to one another, perhaps stemming from the mutual respect that they gained for one another later in life. As for Vernon and Petunia, it seems as though Harry may not have seen them again, as their relationship was never particularly good. Though Petunia certainly harbored affection for Harry, deep within, she never made the same attempt that Dudley made to reconcile with him, which was likely the reason for them never reconnecting. It's also been suggested that, after the fall of Voldemort, the Dursleys were simply escorted back to their home in Little Whinging, where they remained for the rest of their lives. And that's it for this video. Do you want another one of these with even more characters? Comment down below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.